Hey guys, the next guest I have really needs no introduction, but I'm obviously going to give him one anyways. He and his brother have been entertaining children for decades and decades. They have brought you amazing shows such as H.R. Puff and Stuff, Land of the Lost, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, uh, uh, Lidsville, Bugaloos, and many, many more. Roll the clip. H.R. Puff and Stuff, who's your friend when things get rough? H.R. Puff and Stuff. Hey, this is Sigmund. We found him on the beach. He's a sea monster. <laughs> a what? You know, like a regular monster, but from the sea. Mm. Hi. The hen began to grow and 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 grow. Wonder Bug! Wonder Bug! Wonder Bug! It's like a woman and dying a girl, fighting all evil deeds. Each writes for a magazine, hiding the life she leads. That ninja is a cat. Not just any cat stuff, a ninja cat. And she's gonna be your teacher. <laughs> uh, Kelvin, dogs can't learn anything from cats. Ladies and gentlemen, Marty Croft. Hey, there he is, Kyle. <laughs> Thank My you for... favorite actor. <laughs> and especially from Canada, where I was born. That, yeah. Where were you born? Uh, Toronto. Oh, I was from Montreal. Yeah. So you don't speak French. Uh. A little bit? A little, little bit. Good. I'm <laughs> Okay. So I'm happy to do this with you. You were great in our show segment. Thank you. And the Sea Monsters. You got a great acting career ahead of you. You're a very special guy. And I'm here just for you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Now, you and your brother have been around since pretty much the rise of Hollywood, all the way back to the, vaude the vaudeville days. Not me, that's my brother. Well... <laughs> I'm only 23, but I look bad, <laughs> working this hard. So, how did you get all the way to where you are now, and what was it like back then? Well, you know, you have to... Nothing happens overnight. So, you know, you start somewhere, and then you just keep going. You know, we were an act with... We started with our puppets, like Jim Henson did. Except he stayed with the puppets and then we grew. And I brought, you know, our whole company and people forward. And we've done a lot of different things. Many. So you have to just go one day at a time. You got to just keep going. Never give up. And just uh, take the, uh, the good with the bad. If you don't have some bad, you don't know what the good is. So you're doing good. Now, you have some of the most creative ideas and mind-bending shows ever. Like, you've got talking flutes, talking trees, singing bugs. Where do you come up with these ideas? Well, you know, when I'm sleeping, I have a lot of nightmares. <laughs> so all these crazy characters come into my head. Wake up in the morning, go to work, and tell everybody about it. And then the artists start creating what they look like. So it's all a process. It takes, nothing happens quick in this business. But we're still around, we're still making shows, we're going to be making a movie this year, and, uh, you know, so I have nothing to complain about. Well, that's, that's good. Now, also, with these crazy ideas and stuff, some of your shows have been considered trippy in a way. Was that the intention, or did they just turn out that way? Well, I guess we're trippy, so it's just a, you know, an offshoot of who we are. But our shows all had an edge, they still do. And, uh, and look, we made these shows, you know, starting in the 70s, and they're still very much alive. That's especially true. on YouTube. Yeah. You can see everything we've done on YouTube, from the songs, to the shows, to the outtakes, just, you know, just a lot of interesting things. So, you know, I think we get a lot of hits on, on the thing, a lot of views, millions. So we still got... Probably we have probably 40 to 50 million fans out there, and most of them can still sing our theme songs. 
Can you sing one of our theme songs a little bit? I four bars. I can't remember any of them to be completely honest with you. Oh my God, uh, HR Puff and stuff. You can't do a little and you can't do enough. That's right. okay. I did it. <laughs> you were not even born when we did these shows. <laughs> That's then. true. But you were born when we did Sigmund. At, I was. At Amazon. I was. And uh, you're great. And as you play Scott, you know Johnny and Scott, you know, and. Uh, you guys just did great. And with the with the new show compared to the original Sigmund, uh, this specifically the Sigmund puppet, how different are they? Well, you know, I think we tried to keep it all very close, not to get the fans bugged, and the kids, you know, it's kind of new to them mostly, and they get to see the originals and this. And uh, the biggest change in the Sigmund show was you and Johnny. <laughs> That's and you did a great job. Thank you, thank you. The audience loves you. <laughs> that's good. The kids love you. Well, that's that's the goal. And so does Sid and me. You're a great guy. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you had a theme park in Atlanta at one point as well. Uh, I obviously wasn't around to see that, but I wish I had of. Can you tell me a little bit about what it well, was like? Well, first of all, the world of Sid and Molly Croft was under a roof in Atlanta. First park under a roof. We were in a tough spot geographically, so we only were open a year, but we did about six, seven hundred thousand people. And we had rides that no one ever saw, like a pinball ride, where four people get inside of a pinball and get through, get shot through the inner workings of a pinball machine. <laughs> so that was interesting. So we had a lot of things. And then I think we were the first ones to paint all the kids' faces as they come into the park. Now they do it everywhere. That's true. It is everywhere. A lot everywhere. of people, they all follow us. <laughs> That's one good thing. We must have done something right. Uh, you must have. So this is a family business, uh, Sid and Marty Croft Pictures. So is it, do you find it cool to have your, uh, your daughters around with you all the time? Or do they, mm. you oh, know, Of course. Are you kidding? I got three <laughs> beautiful daughters, Kendra, Christina, and Deanna. And Deanna is a great producer. She also makes sure that we have enough money to pay everybody. She's in charge of all that. <laughs> so, that, you know, it, it is a family business. And, you know, just for everybody watching, there are only two companies that have libraries that they own, you know, that, that they've never sold out. And one company is an elephant and one company is a flea. Guess who the flea is? Guess who the company that's an elephant is? Disney. But that's Croft true. is the flea. And we survived. And we're still independent. And it's painful. But you know what? It's a good thing. It is. It is definitely a good thing. Now, what can we expect in the future for Sid and Marty Croft Pictures? Well, you know, the future, you know, it's hard to talk about the future. That's true. And it's a waste of time to talk about the past. So, you know, what we're just doing right now, we've got a another reboot coming out it looks like at Disney and we've got a real unusual feature coming out and we probably shoot part of it up in Vancouver up in Canada then some of it in New York so this is something we're working on and we're always working on new things they're secret mm -hmm. I've never done an interview facing all you're facing all my characters <laughs> yeah. not all of them but this is all you're getting today. That's You'll have to come back. It's it's enough. There's loads of great stuff here. There's this Lee Stacks head. Yep. There's the skull from the original show. So we got a lot here. And yeah. The, the crystals from Land of the Lost. This is the Lee Stack bobblehead. And uh, a few of our awards. We did get a few. <laughs> we did just get the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Emmys. So that was good. That's that's great. Yeah, you've got a lot of uh, great stuff going on here. Well, you will too. <laughs> I hope How so. How old are you now? 13. 13. Well, when we did this, you were 12. That's true. And you grew a lot. <laughs> I, did. Beast, you know? I did. I did. I think you're going to be very tall. Speaking I think you can play the sleaze tag one day. And land maybe, and lost. maybe. And speaking of being 13, if you could give your 13-year-old self any advice, what would it be? <sighs> well, you know, just... Make sure you do good, be nice to your parents, be lucky enough to have a great family, which you do, with your own siblings, and just you know keep doing what you do. And remember one thing, 
What I live by is I work in fantasy, but I don't live in it. And that's a tough one. Yeah. So that's, you know, there's a lot of things. I mean, when I was 13, I wasn't doing what you're doing. I moved from Canada and ultimately lived in the Bronx, right near Yankee Stadium. And the most famous ball player in the major leagues was Joe DiMaggio. So I used to walk him to the ballpark at 13. So, you know, and I was working at 13 also, but not acting. But I was doing good. You know, I did a lot of things around Yankee Stadium. <laughs> so baseball was important. I can imagine it would be living right next to the big stadium like that. Now, if you hadn't have ended up eventually getting into the uh, film and television industry, where do you think you would have been, like, what do you, what, what, what do I, you think your profession would have been? That's a tough one. I have no idea. <laughs> it's hard. I have the same job my whole life. So, you know, the only one that can get rid of me is me. <laughs> so I'm still up there doing it. And, you know, you just keep going until you drop. So how do you, like, there's a lot of moments in your life that you obviously would have had a feeling that things weren't going well. How do you keep going with everything? Well, you just, you know, the one thing I live by, so does my brother Sid, is that, and it's a tough one, you never, ever give up. Because the one thing, if you give up on Tuesday, there is no Wednesday. And Wednesday could have been the day you made it, you missed it. That's true. So never give up. If this is what you love, stay with it. And if anybody ever tells you to get out of it, get rid of them. Because you're doing great. That's great. Thank you for uh, letting me hang out with you and interview oh, you. Listen, you're great. This is a great interview. <laughs> Thank you. you. You're a pro. Thank you. Well, you do real good. Thank you for hey, getting candid with Kyle. Hey. <laughs>